everybody. Welcome along to this IMCO webinar today with Katie Pritchard, who is the most wonderful chiropractor, who I'm going to introduce you to soon. And uh, yes, yeah, so welcome along to this next uh, IMCO uh, Natural Maternity Health webinar. And uh, of course, IMCO is the International Integrative Maternity Health Organization. And uh, our mission is really to connect those birth uh, professionals, um, patient practitioners, the birth practitioners like our midwives and um, obstetricians and doulas, etc., with our uh, health practitioners who particularly are specialising in maternity. So um, it's just wonderful to have you along, Katie, and also to um, make to bring this information to the mothers, the expectant mothers to be, because there is really quite a disconnect sometimes between um, sort of latest academic research and knowledge on things and what women are aware of in the coal face of being mm. a person. Um, and just a reminder to everybody that if you could go into the chat area, those that are live and let us know who you are and where you are and um, if you're a, a health professional or an expectant mum or what country you're from and also just a reminder that we've got the Q&A button down the bottom where, there that you can type any questions in and we'll make sure that we get through those questions in this session and the session um, we just go, we've got a, a series of little topics that we'll, we'll go through today. Um, but let me properly introduce Katie to you all. So um, uh, for the last 20 years, Katie has had the pleasure of taking care of women during their pregnancy and following up with care post birth and um, uh, for the mother and the baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the last 18 years, Katie has uh, been one of the principal chiropractors at Advanced Health Chiropractic, which is nestled uh, in West Auckland in New Zealand. And uh, Katie is passionate about perinatal care um, and has completed her um, diploma in chiropractic neurological development of pediatrics. So that's, um, yeah, she's got, we're going to be talking more about uh, what that, how that all translate into care, and um, as a chiropractor, she focuses on the intimate relationship between the nervous system and the spine, which she'll explain more about. Because uh, when the nervous system is able to function um, unimpeded, then this results in their optimum health and well being. So, taking care of a woman in pregnancy, in Katie's mind, is the best start we can ever give to that newborn, which I so agree with. So welcome along, Katie. Welcome along. So please, um, you know, tell us more about um, who you are and what you do and, sure. and about chiropractic. Well, firstly, thank you so much for having me on. I feel honored and um, it's pretty special, I think, what you're creating here. Um, an opportunity for us all to come together and um, what I know to most help women um, have wonderful births and rear wonderful children is that we all collaborate. Uh, we had the pleasure of listening to two fabulous speakers um, prior to, to us today. And the first one was Claire Yee and she um, really helped inspire us all, but particularly she works with um, pregnant mums and couples uh, through hypnobirthing and hypnobirthing techniques. But really, I think her message was all about empowering us and inspiring us to um, discover that, that birth is natural and can be natural and a wonderful and joyous experience, but yeah. that perhaps these days we tend to be coming at it from a more fear-based uh, mentality. So she really tried to quash those beliefs and um, certainly seems to be able to equip us with the ability, uh, all the tools that we need to help us make this a better outcome. Natalie was um, the wonderful second speaker on the webinar series with you, Kathy, and she had a wonderful message too. And it was, you know, this day and age, we have this terrible conundrum or paradox where as women, we feel like we need to be in the workforce and leaders. And we also want to do 
uh, the mothers and earth mothers and, um, and it's a real dichotomy. But what she really ended up um, uh, expressing was that actually if we let go of all of that and all of those um, um, shoulds and should nots, that yes. actually if we learn to be the leader within ourselves, uh, that we then be the best version of ourselves. Therefore, we're going to be able to bring our children into the world um, and be the leaders that they will aspire to be one day too. So that was pretty cool. Um, I'm a chiropractor and um, I really love what I do. And I really, um, my, my thing, my, my passion has always been um, uh, in helping women uh, through this journey and couples and, through and this journey. Tell us sort of why would, in general, why would women be going to see a chiropractor, chiropractor. Who pregnant? Yeah. So um, for, the, for the most, for, for, well, there's so many different reasons, reasons, to be honest. But essentially, what we're focusing on in chiropractic is this intimate relationship between the spine and um, the central nervous system. The central nervous system being your brain and your spinal cord, and that really controls everything um, that makes us human. Um, so in order for us to thrive in life, we need to make sure that that central nerve system is working unimpeded. Now, pregnancy falls into a very special sort of subcategory. Um, and what we're doing is we're trying to support not only the mother uh, to have a really uh, healthy pregnancy, but obviously we're actually supporting the development of this newborn or, or fetus or baby that hasn't yet been born. Um, to develop into the best version of itself. So in the most, um, in, with, with ease, um, in order for the baby to be born. So we talk a lot about, um, you know, shifting our mindset to help us downshift to be able to birth a baby. And that's very, very, very important. We talk about the importance of having the right support network around us um, and our support team to help us birth that baby. We talk about the importance of, of the environment, but from a chiropractic point of view, we want to make sure that our central nerve system, that being our brain and our spinal cord, is able to um, supply the baby with the right information to help it develop, but also to supply the body with the right information to help it birth that child. Wow. So I guess in a nutshell... It's almost, it's almost like a pre-programming that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. So what we find is that when we check someone um, while they're pregnant, the most important thing would be to make sure that there's no interference to how the brain is communicating with the body. That's simply the job of the chiropractor. Um, so when I talked about the relationship between the spine and the nerve system, that's what any chiropractor is assessing. We're assessing for any interference to the natural flow of information from the brain to the body and the body to the brain. And what we know in chiropractic is that the body is designed to heal, to self-organize, to, um, to essentially uh, be in its most optimal state always, despite what we're doing. However, when there right. are different... It's, it's, it's striving to get that equilibrium or that homeostasis Always. all the time. Exactly. That's the goal constantly. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Even though we, um, we don't always help it. <laughs> no. And that's my next point. And so what tends to happen is life gets in the way and we have different stresses that, ex that are exerted on the body, whether that be a physical stress. Now, the obvious physical stress uh, for the woman who's just fallen pregnant is pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Our body changes in a tremendous way to accommodate the, the growth and the development of the baby. Mm -hmm. um, but also there are other life stresses that get in the way as well. And, and normally the body will try and adapt to those stresses in, a, in the most appropriate way. Sometimes it won't adapt in the most optimal way and it will cause distortions or imbalance in the pelvis or in the spine. As part of its adaptation. As yeah, part of its yeah. normal yeah. adaptation. Yes, that's right. right. Which is that, like for, that sort of makes me think of something like gestational diabetes that we are yeah. you know the body has to adapt that's to the right. pregnancy and sometimes it sort of over adapts basically and that's where we head into some or preeclampsic toxemia is again totally. another case of adapting but actually over adapting 
That's exactly right. And so what we're trying to do um, as chiropractors is normalize that situation as best we can to then optimize the situation for the baby's development and then therefore birth. Right. So the most common thing we would find, and of, of course, um, this depends on, on when you start taking care of someone during pregnancy, the most perfect time to take care of someone would be before she got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So we're setting it up from, you know, perfect canvas, if you like. That's not always the case. So we may take care of someone in their first, second or third trimester. So when uh, you say um, before the pregnancy, mm. you know, if, if somebody did, for example, have mm. this wonderful, reliable cycle and they could literally pick the optimum time, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have a visit or two with a chiropractor mm. beforehand, um, mm. are you meet? You know, would that be at sort of, I don't know, what, two or three months ahead or where, where ahead would you say? Well, big, big, yeah, big, big, big picture. Uh, what we know is because the nerve system does drive everything within the body, whether it's the hormonal system or the, the skeletal structure or um, mm -hmm. even our thoughts and, and emotions, what we do know is that by making sure that, that is unimpeded, you're then creating the perfect environment preconception. So, you know, how long is a piece of string? You know, if I could check the newborn all the way through its life till they conceive their first baby, how perfect would that be? I mean, that would be my, per <laughs> that would be what I would want. Yeah, right. <laughs> the reality is, is that, you know, yeah. people come into chiropractic when they come into chiropractic, but, but we do yeah. take a very holistic view on this and we, and we really want to, um, allow the body to be in its most um, optimal state. Uh, and that is a nerve system that's working unimpeded. When people do come in during pregnancy, what we do often find, particularly when they haven't had previous care, is that there will often be imbalance within that pelvis. And it's really interesting because right. the pelvis uh, supports the uterus, if you like, and therefore the growing baby or the growing fetus, uh, what we find is if that pelvis is in any way out of balance, it's suspended amongst um, the soft tissue of the, of the body, which is at the top uh, will be the diaphragm and at the bottom is the pelvic floor. Okay. Yes. And within that, the, grow, the, the uterus will grow and develop and the baby grows and develops. Now, what we find is because of the attachments of this, particularly the pelvic floor, uh, what happens is the, the, the whole system will become distorted and therefore um, inhibit or affect the way that the baby is able to move and grow within that uterus. And we often find that that then leads to the dissocia during the pregnancy, uh, during the birth itself. So this idea that uh, mm -hmm. women then have difficulty with their birthing because of that distortion within the pelvis, which then creates the distortion within the soft tissue, which then is going to result in an outcome which is less than optimal. So, so basically, you know, that could lead on to a baby that sort of spends a, a dominant time in the posterior position and and when we're in labor is still in that posterior position you've That's got it the sort of thing you're talking about absolutely there seems to be in my experience two two things that really will influence um the lie of the baby okay mm -hmm. in utero one will Actually, be that i'll, I'll yeah. just interrupt before you say that um i just if we've got a yeah, the, the, do please go into the chat, everybody, and let us know where you are. I asked that at the beginning, um, uh, and some of you have signed in after that, but we'd love to know uh, if you're a health professional uh, or if you're a woman who's expecting a baby and whereabouts in the world you're from. So it would be lovely to have you go into the chat and just let us know who we're talking to. And also... Um, if you've got any particular questions, you know, do feel free to um, enter that into the Q&A and we'll make sure we cover them all. Oh, look, that's wonderful. We're getting a whole lot of pings coming in here. And um, so we've got, oh, oh, there's another chiropractor there. 
are watching us, which is wonderful. Um, and uh, a lot of midwives and doulas. So that's just fantastic. Thank you, ladies. Well, sorry, Katie, I wanted to- No, no, that's to, uh, all good. And I'll let you carry on there, please. That's all good. So yeah, so essentially what we're looking for is that pelvic distortion, which then may be influencing the, uh, the soft tissue um, that's supporting the baby. Um, enable for an eight, for it to be able to grow and develop. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, um, addressing those, we call them subluxations. So it means that there's that interference to that nerve system, which is then causing all of that. I, I think of it as wind up in the system, which means the baby's not going to be able to position itself properly, um, which then often will end up in a less than ideal situations. Uh, the other thing that is fascinating is uh, when we have a woman who is less active is a really big issue with regards to pelvic tone and um, the ideal positioning of that baby in utero. Okay, and so we, we meaning she's not doing that wonderful 100 minutes a week of gentle exercise but look, yeah, we'll yeah. no i'm not talking i'm not like talking this. running marathons or anything like that no. but i'm just talking too much sitting yes. um and not enough of gentle exercise during that pregnancy actually right. creates low tone in the system um and that therefore then affects how the pelvic floor is able to accommodate that growing fetus so chiropractic is um yeah, it's really interesting, actually, um, and more and more a problem because, of course, most of our jobs these days or, or um, our lifestyle, if you like, is less active. Um, <laughs> Especially when people are in quarantine and behind oh, computers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a and whole other story. <laughs> that's a whole other story. But, yeah, so yeah. essentially chiropractic... Um, uh, we'll, we'll assess the whole spine. We're not just looking at the pelvis because we, you know, we've been gifted with this wonderful spine. I should have brought my spine along, which is made up of these 24 movable joints, including the pelvis at the bottom, which is where the baby is growing and developing. And we want to ensure that that nerve flow from the brain to the body is, is working well. Um, okay. There is some wonderful research that um, a colleague, friend of mine has produced. And actually, we presented it at the SOMCAN seminar a few years back. Um, and it was really, really interesting. We were interested to know what the effect of the chiropractic adjustment had on the pelvic floor. Because we knew that the pelvic floor was so integral to the positioning of that baby and therefore the birth of that baby. And so they looked at two different groups and they looked at people who were pregnant and they looked at people who were not pregnant. And what they discovered is that after a only one chiropractic adjustment, they're following it up with further research. Mm -hmm. They found that actually in the pregnant women, it did something quite unique. It helped the pelvic floor relax which is what you need to do to birth a baby. Ah. In the non-pregnant group, it actually caused a much stronger and tighter pelvic floor, which is what you want when you're not pregnant. So I thought that was really interesting. So that's Jenna Durr, um, produced that research, and she um, will be going on to do her PhD shortly, which is really, really cool. Uh, so we do... We do know that by affecting the central nerve system, this mm. automatically changes the tone of the soft tissue, but also of the bony pelvis or spine, uh, which will help the um, optimal development of that baby and then the birth of that baby. Um, the other thing that has become uh, more well known um, in the chiropractic world, particularly with regards to pregnancy, mm -hmm. is when we do get a baby that's not in the ideal or optimal position, particularly in that last trimester, you know, we may turn that breach or transverse yeah. lie or posterior presentation. Mm -hmm. What we've found is that there is a certain um, uh, check that we can do and some of you may be familiar with this and it's called the Webster technique and it's ah, a very specific yes, technique about that. Yes, yeah. that would be very interesting for you to explain to us yeah and it's a wonderfully simple technique and it's incredibly effective so there's been various um, case studies that have been written up about this uh, where they 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 say it works in up to 92% of cases, which is phenomenal. And, and this, is what, any particular gestation that we're talking about? 
So usually we'll, so essentially when you get into that last trimester, that's when you'll, is that what you're meaning? So, or, yeah. Yeah. So when, when we get into that Any last particular, trimester. In particular, like, are we sort of meaning 28 weeks, 38 Sorry. weeks? Yeah. Or, yeah. So, well, it, it's a, yeah. So it depends on how that baby is. If it's completely, right. okay. um, if it's completely breached, we'll know earlier on. If it's the first mm -hmm. pregnancy, we may not necessarily know until, you know, 30, 36 weeks mm -hmm. um, and, and subsequent pregnancy. So it, it, it depends. But certainly in that last trimester, a chiropractor will normally start checking for it. We will just start checking for it. So mm -hmm. what we find is very specifically, we'll find that the sacrum, which is the central part of the posterior part of the pelvis, will become subluxated. This is the chiropractic term. So it becomes locked up, if you like, in a certain position, which then influences the nerve system in that area, which then influences the soft tissue in that area, which constricts the ability for the baby to, to rotate and turn. So what we do is we check for this particular um, imbalance in the pelvis, and it's a very simple very gentle and very specific adjustment is made. And then we get the mother um, uh, lying uh, supine or on her back and we check for a particular ligament that becomes very tight or taut at that particular time when this happens, the round ligament, which is um, only becomes palpable towards the end of the pregnancy. And we mm. release that tissue and um, almost it's always you will hear that the mother will come back a day or two later and say, yep, um, well, the, the, baby's, the baby's turned. It's in a different position, which is amazing. And it's a wonderful yeah. thing. Now, it's very difficult for us to work with the person when they're, you know, 39 plus, plus, plus weeks and, you know, all the pressure's on. But typically it will, it, it will work in my experience. Um, it's it's non-invasive, so it's not um, going to harm the baby in any way, and it's certainly very comfortable for the mother. Uh, and the only time I've, in my personal experience, found that it hasn't worked is when we've then subsequently found out that the uh, there's soft tissue constraints, so there's a bicornate or unicornate um, yeah. uterus, or a septal defect, or a you right. know, the, or a, lio, a lyomyoma in the in the uterus that hadn't been picked up, but. Um, on, on so obviously, um, with a, a cephalic baby, head down baby, yeah. um, then it sounds like that could be very helpful to get those posteriors to turn and whatnot. Uh, what, is it? Does it help as much with a breach? Can it? Help yes, no, it does. The baby yes. rotate that far? Yes, it does. It's wow. it's quite phenomenal. Um, so we can have. In fact, I was just reading a case study this morning. Um, uh, first baby um, and um, so head was um, tucked right up underneath the liver, um, the, you know, um, palpable in that position. Uh, she was 30. And that's just so comfortable. <laughs> oh, you've got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> Sorry, so comfortable for that poor woman. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> she had, one, she had um, one session with this chiropractor and um, and then another session with the chiropractor and then the baby turned and um, it was left at um, Oxford anterior, beautiful delivery, uh, very straightforward, no dramas at home. Um, so a, a really, you know, a complete that, breach baby. Yeah, because there's certainly, you know, it, it's, it's very well known. I, I guess that you know when we've got a breech baby, that it's mm. a good idea to refer them to mm. an acupuncturist. Mm. Um, you know, moxibustion is some traditional mm. things, but certainly I don't know that the Webster technique, um, as part of chiropractic, is very well known for no. midwives as another mm. alternative to help turn a breech baby. Yes, um, absolutely. Um, it's it's and this is the issue is that we just need to make this common knowledge because it's right. such a lovely and uh, simple and safe technique for mums. Um, that's and very comfortable. That um, basically any chiropractor would know to do, or is it, do you kind of need to find a chiropractor who's a bit more specialized in maternity? 
Look, um, all chiropractors are trained to take care of women in pregnancy. Um, and um, part of, I mean, we have a five year degree program here in Auckland. Um, and we're all trained also to take care of the newborn baby as well. So every chiropractor has that as, as a, a routine uh, part of our training um, and to a very high level, particularly for any New Zealand graduates, which um, uh, we have quite a few now. The college has been in existence for 25 years. Um, then you're going to find people who have more of a preference to practice in this realm. Um, and therefore going to have more experience. So that would be the only thing I would mention. Uh, most chiropractors uh, will be familiar with and have practiced this Webster technique. Um, what one of the questions that came through asked um, is how do we, do, are we able to palpate for that, um, for that baby's position? And that's exactly what we do. So we use like a Leopold maneuver to determine <laughs> how and where the baby is lying. Um, and I guess with experience that that's um, almost become second nature. I forget to tell the parents that's exactly what I'm doing. I can usually tell the mum before right. the, the midwife. So, you know, so that's part of our training as well. And then um, it brings us on to sort of the newborn as well. Yeah. Obviously chiropractic or, you know, having your newborn checked by a chiropractor mm. Um, mm. is becoming more popular, which is yep. fabulous. Yes. Um, and I remember somebody asking me once, you know, oh, you know, in what circumstance should I have my baby um, mm. checked by a chiropractor after it's born? And I said, and I kind of summarized it as well, if it's a, if it's a very quick birth or a very slow birth, or um, you have quick labor, long labor, uh, instrumental delivery, mm. a surgical delivery, or you know what, <laughs> any everything. <birth. laughs> you just got to you, you know, say, well, there are some situations where mm. you kind of know instinctively that that baby probably needs more attention, but actually any birth, you know, yeah. even those, Births that are just seem to be absolutely wonderful. Straightforward, and, absolutely. You know, yeah. So I'll leave yeah. you to that one. But you know, tell us more about the well, um, newborn. Yeah. So benefit. so with what again in my experience, um, and I and I feel this is such an honour to to be a part of that experience. You know, to be invited in. Um, it's such a a personal. Um, and I'm going to say wondrous journey. You know, birth is the most magical thing and I really do believe it's almost a rite of passage it's just an, an incredible thing uh, so often as I'm working with someone during their pregnancy um, obviously with other practitioners I'm not usually the only practitioner involved um, I will let them know as we get into that third trimester that that is a service I offer um, and I, I want to explain to the mother why why would I get my baby checked and often people want to know what that involves. You know, we might conjure up all sorts of things about how that's going to happen. Um, and the way we explain it is <clears throat> even in the most straightforward and typical or normal birth, if there is such a thing, uh, the, the, the mere fact that um, our babies um, are born through this very bony structure uh, really does mean that they do benefit hugely from having that check post-birth. What happens is our skull is made up of these eight jigs pieces of jigsaw puzzle and quite miraculously, the, brain, the, the skull is designed to telescope in on itself mm -hmm. as it passes through the birth canal, which is extraordinary. Um, and then as it comes out and repressurizes in the outside world, it is supposed to then pop out again. And unbelievably, it does this in most cases. Uh, what we find, though, is that it's a very arduous process coming down through that birth canal. Now, that's in a natural delivery. But also we have cesarean deliveries and, um, uh, you know, assisted deliveries, all of these are hugely stressful on that very, very, very uh, vulnerable and precious little nerve system. And so yeah, when... Especially, I would have to say, the instrumental deliveries. Oh, yeah. unbelievable. You know, unbelievable. And, yeah, and um, certainly when you... You know how sort of 
hard a baby is tugged at sometimes. Oh, um, I, I remember being, um, you know, my obstetric, uh, we had these, these um, lessons back at, at college 20 years ago. And it was so violent, these births that we were made to watch, that I, I actually had to leave the room. I just couldn't imagine that this little tiny thing could have that much pressure exerted on them, mm. obviously, when things had gone wrong. So anyway, so when the baby's born, um, the first thing we want to do as chiropractors is very, very, very gently to see where the wind-up is in their system. So the spinal cord attaches at the base of the skull here, and then it is suspended within the backbone and then it attaches again at the very tip of the tailbone and the sacrum. And so what we want to see is that there is no interference to that. With a natural delivery, we, a huge amount of pressure is exerted on the base of the occiput here. Mm -hmm. And this is vital um, because it's also the area of the brain that controls how we suck, how we feed, how we protect ourselves in this environment that we're quite helpless in when we're first born. So the chiropractor is trained to assess for any compression um, or interference to that vital area that will actually influence whether that baby's going to be able to latch, whether that baby's going to be able to suck and then draw down milk properly, Mm -hmm. um, and therefore going to be able to thrive in its environment. So in my experience, we, that newborn check, uh, we're using pressure as if I was putting a contact lens in my eye. It's that gentle on that baby system. It is, it is so incredibly gentle. However, it's so profound kind of, the effects it could have. Yes, and you can almost watch it thinking, is she Are you doing, doing anything? anything? Yeah. <laughs> I and say that to people, I yeah. say, you know, I know it looks like I've done nothing, but I really, really hope you will notice it. And they do. They do. They do so yes. often... and, and the babies themselves, I mm. think, look like if they could purr, yeah. they would purr. They do. And they just they're so just relaxed. Like, oh, mm. it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, when you're having your head massaged in a yeah. head breast or something. It's, you know, what you're doing is different to that. But that's mm. the look that's mm. on their faces. That's exactly Isn't right. It? And yeah. so it's a really, it's a special time and it's a very simple check. Again, uh, another thing that we'll often do is check within the, the mouth. Um, again, we're, we're, we're checking to see whether that baby's able to draw and suck properly. Mm -hmm. um, and we're able to do some nice gentle adjusting within the cranial system, within the mouth. What we find is that... Um, that newborn check afterwards, I find that often the bond between mother and baby is much stronger. Mm. Um, and we find that always they will be able to suckle afterwards much, much better, which then stops a whole cascade of events that often can happen, Absolutely. which is then we can't and feed and, we, and then we're breast engorgement or breast infection or mastitis, you know, and then it, there's all sorts of other things that can go on from that. Absolutely. Mm. And uh, now I have tended to always say to my clients um, that, you know, once that baby's home, ideally mm. they should stay home for 40 days and 40 mm. nights. Mm. Um, and I will say to them uh, that until that, that baby is over five weeks and over mm. five kilos, mm. I don't want them out and about. I love that. And, and mm. these, you know, these are just kind of those little guidelines mm. that I've got into giving them and I'm saying it's not that I don't want you going out I just don't mm. want to take your baby out um but the exception I always want to say the exception mm. is not yes it's okay to go to the photographer and have a big long session with the baby <laughs> <laughs> no I need to come to you um but the well, exception is taking them out to yeah. have the newborn check what I think you what you're think, sorry I sorry what do you think is the mm -hmm. um optimum mm. age that you would like mm. to see them good question so what I, I what I personally do and I'll share my experience is I say look I agree with that I love what you're saying about them uh, staying at home and I encourage that so I will come to the hospital if they're at hospital I'll come to the home 
Um, and I will always offer up a few home visits for those first few weeks because I too believe that um, it's about, uh, we talk about the fourth trimester, don't we? We, we really need Absolutely. to but I guess we what, what heal, about we need to nourish, we need to bond. Um, it's about, uh, we call it downshifting, you know, coming into our sort of more simple reptilian brain rather than our frontal cortex and, and so on and so forth. So we, um, I go into all of the Auckland hospitals I, and I, I, let my, I, I, I let the birth team there know. So I don't want to be stepping on anybody's toes. I'm there um, to work with everybody. Um, also people who are, are not luckily enough to oh, be sorry. in Auckland with you, um, if they needed to take their baby to see yeah. a chiropractor, what do you think is sort of like a two week? Good time timing. Yeah, sort of so I actually believe that, that as soon after the birth as possible. So um, that's why I suggest, you know, if, if the, the, the couple or the um, are, are willing, and they've invited you in, I think that's the perfect time because it stops then that cascade of potential other events, um, in my they, opinion. If they have to take the baby to the chiropractor yep. and the chiropractor doesn't do home visits. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I almost want to say stop on the way home from home. the facility. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You know, like, yeah, yeah. That, that's, you know, like leave that birth centre or that hospital ward on your way home, stop and have yeah. that chiropractic check. I think it's yeah. really, it really helps. Yeah. And it really it's, is. Um, it's suckling, doesn't it? Mm, I really do think so. Overall contentment and the mm. amount that those baby, that particular baby cry. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, particularly when they've had uh, instrumental deliveries. Boy, those babies mm. do nothing but scream sometimes. I know. And you know, you know. know intuitively mm. they've got a wicked headache. Mm. Um, Absolutely. And you want to get that, you know, if you can't get access mm. to that chiropractic mm. here in your postnatal facility, mm. then yeah, stop on the way home. Nice um, advice. We're going to, and um, uh, I'm just thinking at some other things that, well, to, to keep us to time yeah um there are some are there some general misconceptions about what chiropractic yeah. is that you want to sort of have a chance to cover off yeah i think um i think it's a really I, I i i love that you've asked that question um and it's a really interesting one i i've heard it and i've practiced for 20 years and i obviously may have a different opinion, but I think there is this conception that chiropractic is um, not gentle or that um, potentially there are other people that we can go to. Obviously there are other practitioners we can go to and I highly recommend that, but um, this notion that chiropractic might be rough or not for uh, the newborn or for the mother or for the pregnant mother. Um, and that's kind of re a little known for sort of you know jerky movements or something. Yeah, that's yeah. I think, oh my god, are you going to twist my baby's head? Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I just want to really emphasize um, that it really is not like that. And obviously, um, we're taught, I mean, chiropractors here in New Zealand now, I, it took me seven years, that was just what we had to do a double degree. But nowadays, they do um, a five, a five year course, and it's a very thorough course. And, and I would yeah, say that's almost a huge qualification. Yeah, yeah, mostly it's to make sure we're safe. Um, ironically, you know, that, it, you know, it, it's, it's um, really, you are in the uh, primary healthcare sector. So you are seeing people sometimes before they have seen their doctor or yes. their GP or what, it, or their specialist. So you need to be able to identify when there, it is time for someone or an emergency situation. And that includes with babies and pregnancy. You know, we are trained to know when we're in emergency mode and therefore it's, it's you need to go somewhere else, you know, and then we'll help you. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, yeah. Um, so it's, it's- But that's good to know. It, yeah, it is that misconception yeah. that it's yep. going to be a bit almost violent and it's yeah. not, that's not what, you, no, doing with no. I just want to have a look at some of the other um, yep. comments that we're getting through. Um, and, oh, okay. So um, 
Carol has asked, I wondered if you relied on the mothers reporting the movements, mm. etc. Mums um, that they are, you know, tuned into their mm. babies are good at working out so many things in her experience. Um, you know what? That's a beautiful question or, or comment, mm. Carol, because what I find is that is where I go to first, mm. particularly when when there are a few other people involved in this birth story and perhaps we're con perhaps they've been told something's about to happen or they're starting to get worried because of yes. someone's told them you have to have this baby by a certain time because of this scenario you know there's that fear that comes in yes. and, and, I will and they'll, or they'll be sort of dropping a few hints and saying totally. look you know it, it looks like we might need to induce you or we might um, so there's well, fear or, around or, that. Or a big baby on board or, you know, these yeah. like little comments mm. that women receive and, and, and they do nothing but worry at mm -hmm. that point about the consequences of what they're That's right. Mean. And I always maintain there is this amazing thing called, I'm going to say in this situation, mother's intuition. And, you know, I will, you know, always try and make the time to sit down with her um, and actually say, what do you think is going on? What do you feel is happening yeah. with your baby? Do you feel there is, you know, imminent danger or anything? You know, and I think actually just sort of unpacking that with the mother often helps to um, dissipate some of the fear that might have been building because that's a big problem for us uh, with birthing these days is this fear that comes to seep in. As soon as we start operating out of our fear, you know, our frontal lobe, that fear and that, that, that um, anticipation of what might go wrong, that is so counterintuitive to be able to have a baby. Absolutely. You know, that's not the yeah. place we want to be. So we really want and to help our women. counterintuitive, it's counter biologically as well. Yeah. Because, you know, we, we know that we don't want the adrenaline and no. the fear and the anxiety. It yeah. literally slows down dilatation. Mm. Um, whereas, you know, when that, that woman is in that great headspace mm. and she's relaxed and she's feeling empowered and she's trusting mm. her body, mm. um, you know, that the oxytocin can take over and she will literally dilatate quicker. That's um, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm just having a little, oh, mummy radar. Yes. That's, that. that's, that's, that's what <laughs> that's we right. call it. And that, that mummy radar stays with you your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I just Especially think that when they're teenagers, <laughs> totally. And I just think that we don't in today's society, we don't actually, um, you know, we, we kind of downplay that a little bit, but it's so powerful. So powerful. And, you know, and, we know, and, we know, we know. Like, um, we've, we've almost lost the, um, Day, the, the regular conversation about talking about intuition and you know what's mm. your instinct telling you and, and mm. I, I mean we go slightly off tangent but I know with with our own children that was just something that I wanted to always be part of the you know daily kind of part of life of of how you work things out and I and um, you know oh I'm not sure if I want to you know um, go to that party or not oh well what's your gut telling you is it worth going to or not you know like and so and and but sometimes i think with mothers when you found out that you're pregnant it is almost like the very first time in your life mm. that you people are telling you mm -hmm. what's your instinct <laughs> what's yeah. your intuition and yeah. you're like nobody's ever asked me that in my career I before know. and now this is the most important job that i'm doing in my life and people for the first time are telling me I need to rely on this. I've never relied on it before. I, you know, it's, I love that. <laughs> so it's sort that of just take that time to develop it. Mm. Um, I, I, Petra had made a comment um, mm. with the questions of, and, and it was funny because I've just read this question after we've addressed it. Oh, good. Um, was the fact that, you know, chiropractors practices often, she hears the opinion that it's intense and an evasive yeah. and the mm. adjustments are made. And, you know, can we talk a little bit more about how gentle it is? So isn't that funny that we've yeah. actually 
you know, we, we, you, you know as a chiropractor that that's one of those mm. misconceptions out there. Um, well, we are going to be winding things up soon. Yeah. I just wonder if there was um, any other questions or comments that anybody wanted to throw in there. Um, now is your time. Um, and I'm just thinking, is there anything else that I particularly wanted to ask? What, so the, um, what would be the commonest things that you, that you find that people can't, that you know, pregnant woman or wanting mm. to be pregnant or post-pregnant or what's the commonest stuff that you're dealing with? Um, for the most part, um, when people come during their pregnancy, um, it will often be because they've had um, a less than ideal first pregnancy. So they, <laughs> like you said before, take us back to what we were saying before. Yeah. And so they're like, I've, I'm more connected now. I want to try this a different way. Stage. Right. Yeah. So then we also get lots of referrals um, because of. Um, uh, like a uterine constraint issue, so the the baby's not um, in the in the proper lie. So we'll get lots of referrals in for that, and then subsequently they'll realise the difference between subsequent births. Usually, um, then we do have because of the the type of practice we have um, in Auckland, we're group practices, six chiropractors, and we all. Um, uh, our, our whole reason for being is really to take care of the whole family. Yes. Um, so what we find is that a lot of our people, because we get internal referrals, they will be coming in because they now are starting to understand that actually, you know, keeping your body in its most optimal state is going to then help ultimately with that whole pregnancy and the comfort of that pregnancy. And then therefore the better birth outcomes and, um, like I think, the best start in life. Uh, so lots of different reasons. Okay, we've got um, one um, question come in, which is, it's one of those ones that yeah. I think is always a little bit of a mystery. Um, and for, for those that don't know, is what is the difference between a newborn having a chiropractic check or an osteopathic check? Again, this is this is a tough one to answer because obviously yeah. I'm a chiropractor. What's very yeah. interesting in my experience is that um, uh, both chiropractors and osteopaths um, actually assess, in my opinion, and and look after that cranial system mm -hmm. um, in a very similar way for most of us. Yes. Sometimes it comes down to where we've trained. So depending on where we've trained depends on um, how experienced we are with taking care of that new per that newborn. But basically, um, whether it's cranial osteopathy or cranial chiropractic, they are slightly but, different, but but again, very similar. They are actually very similar. You, you you're both heading into the same area um, yeah. to to accomplish similar, but it's so it. it I think, I think I think the main difference, if, if we want to just sort of hang it on one thing, is yes. that it's the outcome is often for the same. The, the desired outcome of seeing an osteopath or a, or a or a chiropractor with a newborn is for this is the same. You know, mm -hmm. is to have a baby that's more at ease, that's mm -hmm. able to thrive, that's able to um, develop in the most um, succinct way chiropractors and i guess i really can only speak to that is that yeah. we will address it through the nerve system so through the central nerve system being the brain and the spinal cord which is housed obviously in this in the skull and the spinal cord um but but my experience does tell me that in the case of a newborn we actually the both professions do deal with it fairly similarly um there's a lot of crossover there okay all right. Well, that's good. And I it, hope that answers and that, it. Yeah. No, that that is interesting, mm. um, because I, you know, as a as a full grown adult, um, when you're seeing an osteopath or a chiropractor, it is different. But it's interesting to know that that's there's those similarities there. Yeah. Um, which I, yeah, because you know there is a lot of sort of knowledge around taking your baby to a cranial osteopath mm. and not so much knowledge about taking them to a chiropractor. No, there isn't. And I, and I, and, I just and have our, I, like, I think I, I don't know course. why that is. Yeah. No. 
No. Um, funnily enough, I'm seeing, I've got a lovely little person I'm looking after at the moment um, who is seeing both of us. And, right. and they, so they're not mutually exclusive. So in yeah. some circumstances, we're, we're working on different systems uh, for, again, for the same outcome. Um, mm. So I, I, I'm never one to say, don't see somebody else. I think that we have to always work collaboratively. It's, um, it's a team. It's like sort of saying, you know, should I see um, the traditional Chinese uh, medicine herbalist or should I see an Indian Ayurvedic herbalist? Well, they're both herbalists and they're both treating the same things and they're both after the same outcomes, but they have slightly different techniques. Right. Yeah. And you could be seeing both herbalists. Yeah. And, yeah. Yep. I agree. That's a good analogy. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that um, we will wind it up there. Right. And um, look, I've certainly, you know, man, I, I kind of, not that I thought I was a no at all on this, but I certainly thought I knew quite a bit about chiropractics and babies and, 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 and maternity, but I've certainly learned a few things myself. So Aww. it's fantastic. And um, especially the, the manoeuvre that you talked about, mm. that's so interesting. Mm. And um, so just wonderful. And uh, so we're going to wind it up here, Katie and I, but we've yeah. already arranged that we're going to um, close this recording down and uh, and get straight back onto the yeah. talking because there's some more things we want to chat through. Excellent. And well, uh, collaborations and, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's just great. Uh, Katie is a real leader in her area. And um, I remember once at a, at a conference, I had a, a very esteemed speaker there, um, which was Professor Robbie Davis Floyd, who is like the the goddess of uh, maternity anthropology on the planet. And um, it was her and Sheila Kitzinger, and Sheila Kitzinger passed, but it is Robbie, is really mm. the world's top maternity anthropologist. And uh, she put her back out, and she was miserable <laughs> she was not a happy lady and, and I remember wheelchairing her into um, a local birth centre because she to, to have a look at the birth centre and uh, she was really unhappy and, um, and, and Katie pulled her aside at the conference and I don't know what you did but it was this absolutely miraculous cure <laughs> and she just she couldn't walk and then she just was happy chappy and um and that was all going on behind the scenes at a conference because mm. she was the final speaker and she couldn't at the time stand so mm. that was slightly problematic and uh, <laughs> and by the end of the the day she was up standing doing the amazing closing oh. and uh yeah so if you've if you've never been um impressed by a chiropractic boy it's an it's an amazing amazing skill set so okay i'm gonna we'll, we'll say goodbye to everybody and thank you for for joining thank you. us today and uh we look forward to seeing you all next time lovely thank you so much kathy thanks everyone bye everybody bye